We have uh, Congressman Joseph Crowley. His father and grandfather were members of the NY NYPD. He's going to join us in a moment. But we also have former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. And Mr. Carrick, I'll start with you. You wrote a pretty uh, powerful, wow kind of uh, piece in Time Magazine this week talking about uh, the war waged on the homeland. I just want to read part of it. You said, if you listen to some in the media, purported civil rights leader Al Sharpton, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, and others around the country over the last several weeks, you're forced to believe that nearly all of America's local and state police are out to kill minorities. You went on to say, it's a lie that has the potential to rip America at, at its seams and cause damage far worse than any attack on our country, including that on 9-11-2001. You were New York City Police Commissioner in 2001. Oh, you saw what it really meant to have an attack on the homeland. Isn't this a little much? I, I don't think so, uh, because you have 700,000 police officers in this country, maybe a little more. Plus, you have the federal law enforcement community. For that entire community to be labeled racist, um, for people to say that they are targeting minorities, they are harassing minorities, um, and, and all based around two incidents, two, that had absolutely not one shred of evidence that those two events were based on race, I think it's bizarre. And I think it hurts the society uh, in general. I think it hurts the country. Um, and I think it has to stop. And hopefully, um, I, I think what we're seeing now, uh, what we've seen in the last couple of days uh, between the NYPD and the mayor, uh, hopefully it's coming to an end. Okay, I want to bring in uh, Congressman Joe Crowley, who is at the site, is going to go to the, the funeral. Congressman, I want uh, you and our viewers to, to listen to what Mayor de Blasio actually said last month, talking about what he tells his own biracial son and, and how he deals or should deal with police officers there. Listen to this. Because of a history that still hangs over us, the dangers he may face, we've had to literally train him as families have all over this city for decades and how to take special care in any encounter he has with the police officers who are there to protect him. Congressman, you are the son and grandson of New York City police officers. Did that make you angry? Well, I think uh, in light of what had taken place, uh, rhetoric was very high, I think, by the mayor. I also think by others as well. I, I, I don't, what, I, what I really do appreciate is the ratcheting down of the rhetoric at this point in time. And right now, the focus here today uh, on these police officers who sacrificed everything to protect uh, the citizens of our great city, uh, in, in police officer Lou, as well as police officer Ramos. And uh, uh, I'm proud to be here today to stand with their families. Do, do you agree with uh, Bernie Carrick here, who says that it's that kind of language that stoked or at least uh, pushed somebody to, who was not mentally stable to get a gun and as basically assassinate uh, the two men, one of whom's funeral is going on behind you? I think that the police department of New York City, and I think police departments, many around the country, are not what they once were. Uh, and I think what's reflective here, when my father served some 50 some odd years ago, uh, it was a different police department. Today it's a much more uh, integrated police department. More than 50% are of minority and female. And I think uh, as reflective of the two individuals who gave their lives uh, here serving the people of New York City, uh, it's not the same the police department, and I think tactics have changed. That's not to say, though, that there's not the perception out there that we have to deal with, that maybe justice isn't being uh, divvied out uh, equally. I don't agree with that. I think that more and more we see in America uh, equally distributed okay. justice. But I think the perception out there needs to be dealt with. And that's a very good point. I'm going to ask you about that. There is a perception out there in black communities that they do have to be careful. And they are being told uh, to use caution and, and even more than that when they have an encounter with police officers. Do you understand why they feel that way? Uh, yeah, they, under, uh, they feel I, that way. I, I can... they, they, they feel that way because there are people out there that are inciting that language. The reality is, in New York City especially, um, there's been an 85% reduction in homicides and in violent crime, primarily in the black community. They have been the benefactor of all the law enforcement programs that were put in place since Rudy Giuliani back in 1994. Um, they are the ones, especially back then, you had African-American women 
placing their babies in bathtubs at night to prevent them from being shot in random gunfire. That doesn't happen today. The city has changed. The crime reduction is enormous. Having, but having said that, you and I don't know what it's like to be a black American. Do you, can you see from their perspective that despite strides, there still is a long way to go? I don't think there's a long way to go. I personally, I don't see it. I was a cop. I was a very aggressive cop. I know thousands of cops that weren't racist. Um, is there racism in this country? Yes. But to label the entire police department and every cop, yeah. local, state, and federal in this country as a racist is bizarre. Congressman, what do you say to that? Oh, I, I don't disagree with that last part. I don't think uh, every uh, police officer in America is racist. I think that there are great police officers, wonderful men and women who uh, sacrifice daily to protect the citizens of our great country. I do think there are bad apples in every walk of life, whether it be in politics or the clergy and certainly in the police department as well. To root those uh, bad apples out is part of what we need to do. But I, I think it's also uh, have the, the opportunity to have a conversation. I saw Selma last night, the movie that came out. Very powerful, only 50 years ago, where we saw tremendous abuse. I agree, that doesn't exist on the same scale today. But I do think that we have to have that conversation because of a perception uh, within some communities that, that, that it's not equally distributed justice in our country. And I think that's something that needs to be talked about. Yeah. For the sake of the police uh, officers who protect us as well, helping to make their job an easier job, not a more difficult one. The, the scene uh, that people remember from the funeral uh, of the first uh, police officer, Rafael Ramos, was of a lot of police officers turning their backs and, uh, and to protest the mayor. Uh, this time, the police commissioner has sent a letter to the NYPD saying, please don't do this. Uh, do you think that that's the right call, uh, Congressman? Uh, what I believe is that we should focus on the families of these two slain officers. As I said before, uh, members of the NYPD who gave the ultimate sacrifice in protecting all New Yorkers and on their families, uh, respecting uh, their sorrow, their grief. Uh, that's what the generosity of New Yorkers are about today. That's why there's such an overwhelming outpouring of support uh, for these families we're seeing in so many, many ways. And I think that's appropriate. And you've gone so far as to say you believe that Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, has blood on his hands. Do you believe that the officers attending this funeral today should show their protest? And this is the forum to do that? Personally, no. I don't, I don't think so. This is about the family. This is about the loss of a New York City cop uh, that should pay his family and him the respect. Um, I didn't disagree. I didn't agree when they did it the first time. Uh, I'd like to see it not happen today. Bernard Carrick, thank you for your insight. Congressman Joe Crowley, appreciate it.